welcome back to the Kikau series. Uh, we, we say that uh, there are so many challenges to making agriculture an economically vibrant sector. And those challenges are even compounded for the youth. Tell me, you and others uh, who are involved, other young people I mean here, the focus is in you or on you. Uh, uh, the young people involved in agriculture today, what are the f challenges they are facing? The major one. Okay, uh, the first thing is mentality, because uh, mentality. yes, for quite a good time, people have been seeing agriculture as a losing sector, as very risky. For example, banks don't really trust ba uh, uh, agricultural projects. And at some point, even the policy had uh, like roofers where like we need to change things. How do we equip farmers to not only be, to say to be farmers, but look at them as business people like my friend here was uh, introduced. So farming is, is a business first. So if we change that mentality to have that, uh, the, the people in the finance sector, people in the politics, believing that agriculture is a business, that mentality itself is sure. the first thing to do. So the, the, the biggest challenge is access to the finance and then making agriculture a business, not uh, yes. that yes. activity of losers. Yes. Then um, the, 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 the third thing would be how do we build capacity for farmers and people who are supporting farmers because we shouldn't look at agriculture in the eye of, okay, it's about farmers. No, because we need also to think about who is going to transport the farm products to the consumer. What technology do we use to preserve the quality of those produce? So it's, it's oven and sometimes when you don't really act on one ingredient, you lose the flavor. So, uh, so you, you, you are telling us that there are so many play players at different levels, a, a whole concept of, of a value chain. Uh, at a certain time, Lucy, you talked about, oh, even uh, the crew working with us today are part of the agricultural sector today. Yes. So tell me, what are the challenges that you face in, in that value chain uh, concept in agriculture and how it plays? and becomes a challenge for the youth in particular? Um, digging into my own experience, I think one of the challenges I had initially when I was starting is working alone. Um, because when you work alone, there's a lot of information. It could be information on finances, information on information itself, information on markets. There's so much you miss out when you want to work alone. But the minute you find your tribe, that's long for what you find people who have a, f a common purpose as what you have, things tend to become a little bit easier because you tend to find um, referrals come in once you start working. Not, uh, you can work as an individual, but together you have a common goal. And when you look at agriculture as a value chain, the, the issues and the challenges of which person looping into the agriculture space. I've had you guys talk about banks. Yes, it's true that agriculture is one of the most high risk sectors. Mm. Bankers will tell you that, but ask them why. They don't know, their information is at numbers. Beyond numbers, what else do they know? So as far, uh, it's our job as farmers to do the data collection bit of it, or even the training so that these bankers, when they're saying we can't approve your loan because um, your numbers don't make sense, I want to ask them, other than that Excel sheet document you have, what other supporting documentation do you have? They do this for all other sectors, manufacturing, any other sector, they will have the numbers and will have some other data that they used to model to see possible results. Mm. So I think the major problem we have as youth in the agriculture is information which disadvantages us at different levels. I information, data, evidence. Yes. Beyond the few numbers yes. that the banker can be interested in. Yeah. Uh, I think that calls for a, a huge network, bringing in sometimes researchers who will produce evidences that we need but also those field workers who will produce the data and show how this is. And technology must come in to reduce that vulnerability, I think. Yes. Uh, it, it is very interesting. 
But, but those are challenges, I think, that we need to bring to the table of so many other players in the uh, agricultural value chain. Uh, the good thing with uh, agriculture is that everyone has a role to play because those who don't produce and uh, uh, add value to the producers, at least they are consumers. Uh, we find ourselves in that last one. So I think we need to develop a strategy to bring everyone on the table to discuss all those uh, different issues. But I have another issue. Um, how do we attract more youth to agriculture? Because um, critical mass plays a role. And how do we bring in all those skills you talked about, all those competences to come, those collecting data, those using um, social media, IT people and agronomists and others. How do we bring more youth into the agricultural sector? as one which can be economically viable? I think um, the first thing is how we communicate agriculture, because we need also a new sector or area of working where we have people who, are really, who really understand what agriculture needs, what we do in agriculture, and people will be able to communicate to the rest of the people. So that young people who are out there, who are looking for a career to start, they will feel, okay, my career should be agriculture. So communicating agriculture has been not really good. You even find it with the image you see when you, everyone is talking about farmers, that you, they'll bring you like a person that you never wish to be. Mm -hmm. The picture that they'll bring of a farmer, at some point, no one wants to be that person. And you understand that young people who are really attracted sometimes with really like um, shiny stuff, they will never go to agriculture. But today, the, uh, the technology we have is really enough to change this. Mm. And uh, the way communication is being decentralized, today, like a farmer now can become a reporter. Because mm. if I start today and report on every activity I do on my farm, actually I will end up with a TV station. <laughs> mm. Maybe the the way we can uh, attract more youth, but also the good ones. Because we don't need like hopeless people in agriculture. We don't need people who don't have um, dreams in agriculture. Because that, that's the problem we've had before. Because we've had maybe people who, had, who are not fighting for anything. They have lost almost, they have dis been mm. discouraged. Mm. But this time we need to attract best yeah. minds, innovators, people will think out of the box and realize that uh, we don't need to trade maybe with outside uh, 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 to send our products outside Africa because we still have people who are malnourished in Africa. Mm. We don't need to send Create our- that market within yes, the continent. Within the continent. Uh, but, but okay, you say we need to communicate, we need to create interest, we need to bring them. I, I think strategically, what do we need to do? I think we need to meet them where they are. And ah. when you look at hangout, um, when I say where the youth hang out, I don't literally mean go find them el everywhere. Youth hang out on Twitter. Mm. You'll find them on Facebook, you'll find them on LinkedIn, you'll find them on TikTok. That mm. is where if you want mm. to hang out mm. with the youth, basically that is where they are. So mm. I think the first point of striking interest or conversation with anyone is meeting them where they are. So if we use social media, which is a very low hanging fruit for us, for example, here in Kenya, I think access of uh, social media and 4G internet is very rampant in Kenya. If we are able to meet them at that point, for starters, we are going to start striking the interest because you can't force anything down on someone if they are not willing to take it. Mm -hmm. So if, as you were saying, we are able to share our stories and for the youth who are already in it, it's a challenge and I like how they are taking it up. Share your story, you don't have, Myself, I have a problem of always being on TV, but I'm always on TV, I'm always on social, I try to hide behind my onions a lot, because I'm not very, co but I still try, because mm. I think um, the solutions for the youth lie within ourselves. Mm. So if I can come and find you on Facebook, if every other time I'm bombarding you with information on onions, psychologically, somehow, I'm starting to engage work. you, and eventually, you're going to attract the right crowd. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that is very good. I, 
uh, again, I, I think there is a gap of uh, how we see things. I, I was thinking that you will tell me you, you need to do to have many workshops, many conferences, many what and go to the universities and uh, but you talked about Facebook, TikTok and uh, and all those uh, social media where you will find them and show good examples and successful uh, stories, uh, the success stories that you have from the youth involved in agriculture. I, I, I'm <laughs> I'm looking at you and uh, at, um, at the image, uh, professional image of a, of a farmer. Because when you say involved in agriculture, I think of a farmer. Um, he is a diplomat. Mm -hmm. You are a banker. That is, if, if we met outside, that is what I would say. Yeah. Uh, because of how you are dressed. Um, and Every professional uh, sector has its own etiquette. And in Africa, it is like the etiquette for a farmer is dirty, is um, somehow poor, very tired. Uh, and that is it, somebody who has no time for him or herself. Yeah? So how do we change that image and make a farmer who can smile, make a farmer who can see life uh, in, a, in a better light. How do we change that? Um, let me di dive right into that. I am a farmer, and in my farm, there's something that is happening today. I was answering calls, and then I delegated everything so that I can sit here. I think one thing we should do is set up systems. They don't have to be very, um, how do I put it, on paper, but as a farmer, you need to set up systems that can work for you in that farm. You don't necessarily have to be in the farm that when you're not there, the cows are sick. Uh, there's this thing when you are younger, when the person of milking is not there, the cow has sensitive uh, breasts, no? Mm -hmm. Sensitive uh, titties, yes. Because mm. nobody else is there to farm. And I think as farmers, for starters, we need a life. Mm. Farming is a job. It's eight hours in a day. Let it be eight hours in a day. And within those eight hours, as what I do in my farm, what is the most high value thing that I can do? That is the only thing I do. The rest I delegate. Because if I need, if weeding will consume eight hours of my day and I can pay 200 shillings for weeding and I can sit here and probably through this conversation get a client who's going to pay me 20,000, why would I weed? I do what is most high value, I delegate the rest and that's the system I use in my farm. Yeah. Mm. So farming must not be that kind of slavery type of Yes, you wanted to say something? No, I think um, uh. we need to create a way of living mm. for farmers that is well known for many people. If you go to America and you meet someone with a cowboy hat and the boots, you already realize that that person might be a farmer or a rancher. Uh, in Africa, we don't have that. Unless maybe you look like almost a beggar, they would maybe think that you are a farmer. So we need to also bring other sectors to think about agriculture as um, a sector that can also consume other sectors' products. I want to bring in fashion designers to think about farmers. How do we make uh, clothes for farmers? How do we uh, mm. treat them when you meet them? How do you greet them? How do we need to build up this kind of way of living that will make role models, because without role models, agriculture will never get mm. anywhere. So, so we need to have these people who you think that, okay, a young person will feel like, okay, I want to be a farmer like Pacific, because mm. he's seen me maybe on TV, he's seen mm. me in a suit, and he feels, okay, that's really a good job. So there are changes that we need to, uh, to, to bring to the, to, to the world, to our world, the youth. And uh, that is not only bringing the figures of the money we achieved, but also show ourselves as ambassadors of uh, the agricultural sector. And not leave it only to old people. Because yeah. this is one of the things, oh, he's old, he may be a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> he's dirty, he may be a farmer. So it means uh, being a farmer does not say that you need to be dirty to be old, to be unhappy, 
uh, there are farmers who are happy organized. And I think this is part of the capacity development that we need to do, share that good news to the youth and have them rather in agriculture than on the street begging. It is more, um, I mean, humiliating, yeah. undermining to beg when you are fully constituted than going to the farm and do it scientifically with technology and everything. So uh, I think um, we, need, we have a role to play and at a different level. Let's meet again to go through how to transform all the agricultural sector and what are the low hanging are fruits that we need to take so that we really propel agriculture on another level.